my eyes burned as the tomb, the stone of the door that was steel, but whom it, it rolled away, and the dream of the dawn came in twilight. We were surrounded by wondrous redwoods, though I could hear my husband Charles, his voice whispering, Sequoias, darling. I gasp again, redwoods, with a smile, and remember that we are free. That whatever stone is rolled away, whatever magic, whatever power by the tank, it is opened. The tree closest to us, which the tank behoomit, the sixth generation to third, X1 crab tank, like a well armored ghost, lies against. Its barker its bark is thicker than Charles' arms, and it is red, a beautiful blood of all those warriors who have died in the last war, as if they had stained it somehow. It was seventeen feet round, though probably larger. I couldn't tell. The one across the way drew my attention immediately, for it was just as red, vermilion almost. And I couldn't see the tops. So it was like a skyscraper. It was 70 feet round. It was massive. It was huge. It was the most gorgeous and beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And then we noticed it as we looked up higher. That wrapped around the sequoias was a second canopy. Lower down. It was beautiful. And the undergrowth was too. Beautiful flowers of purple, gold, and green. And obsidian giant orchids. There were many u unique other flowers that lay around in the fauna. Species I had never known, or at least they were larger than anything I'd ever seen. The manzanati trees and arbutus lay below the redwoods, mingled about them, their branches made a labyrinth. This was why the sun had never climbed down, and never has made its way, rarely in distinct twilight to the ground. A labyrinth branches. Not more than 30 feet, maybe 18, 10 in some cases off the ground. Here and there we could see the roots of some bending over as if to form a path, saying, come along dear, the two of you get come and get lost within us. Our little hollow was a majestic glade, in the forest a small home to the to Behumet's resting place. Our comrades they still lay hibernating, but we were in a meadow, and it was beautiful, beyond the 70-foot round manzanetti to red, the beautiful sequoia tree. Beyond it to the east was an open tall glade of glass that began a slope near the edge, as if it was going off. The rock was dark red. There were blots of grey stone as well, flowing steadily and near down until a cliff it went. We made our way over. We walked slowly, always looking back every few seconds. And we heard nothing but the calm voice of birds and the nibbling chirps of tiny rodents and the hum, the hum of the strings that were the grasshoppers their legs being played in the grass that we were walking through. It was past our heels, and in some cases, once we'd gotten into the meadow, it was way past our waist. And as we drew close to the edge and the slope that we could tell as the grass started lowering itself down with the slope, there we found the red stone mingled with gray. And not more than ten steps beyond the end of the grass, where the slope made its discovery at the edge of a cliff and at the bottom a river a hundred feet down. Here Charles took me in his hand and said we are home. It was the charge of the Fujin Corps that opened the door and I'm pretty sure I could make the cannon fire once more. We'll tear down that close 70, the closest 70 foot tree, the one before the meadow, and therein we'll make a home. It won't grow anymore, and it'll just take hundreds of years to rot itself out. 
so we'll hollow it out from the inside with the lasers. The last gun we've got, like an arc saw that fires heat. And I'll carve us a home and we'll live here and wait for the others to wake. And this was our dream. And so we went back to the tank and we were busy. It was beautiful in the twilight of midday as the sun was a furnace high above the clouds that we could never see and it came mingling down above the branches of the sequoia to meet the labyrinth of manzanani and arbutus trees and below that the flora and fauna were beautiful and this was the tale of something else something we'd never dreamed of a future that was obedient to nature Charles began mapping out a plot of the tree staircase to a second floor and possibly some fantastic sleeping areas just like those of old but we weren't this is a beautiful home where we weren't gonna hide anymore so we turned the gunnery core arm and the rear hatch opened and there was no weather that we could see other than the future and so we fired the laser cannon in hopes to create a new life, and this is what happened.